The Super 73 S2 is a motorized two-wheel machine that strikes a balance between an electric bike and an electric motorcycle. But is that actually a good thing? Today, let's find out. We'll take a look at the features, the specs, ride it in the city, ride it on some trails, and find out what's good and what's not. But before we get to that, here's a rad Super 73 S2 montage. The Super 73 S2 was pretty hyped up when it first came out a couple years ago. So yeah, I'm pretty late to the party. I do own a couple e-bikes, but nothing that has the presence and the aesthetic allure of this Super 73. It looks so cool. So let's take a quick look at what we've got here. The silhouette is fantastic. It sort of has a cafe racer vibe going on. Some people complain about the big open space right here, but I actually dig it. It really highlights the fact that this is electric. Plus it provides a space for an aftermarket storage solution. The S2 is a multi-class bike, allowing it to operate in class one, two, three, and unlimited modes. It's got a 705 watt electric rear hub motor, 960 watt hour battery, a single speed, suspension up front, but no suspension in the rear. The brakes are hydraulic two piston calipers with 180 millimeter rotors. It's got a simple display, motorcycle style headlight, easy to use throttle, no mirrors, turn signals, or horn. And one thing that is maybe a bit over the top, there are Super 73 logos everywhere. Here, 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 and even here. Okay, okay, we get it but I will forgive that because it just looks so rad. Okay, let's get out of this boring parking garage and actually take this thing for a ride. Okay, let's talk about comfort. The handlebars are in a good position. The grips are indeed grippy. The brake position, it's a little bit low, but I guess that can be adjusted. In general, the ergonomics of this bike are pretty good. Though I do have to say, I feel like I'm slightly big for this bike. I'm six foot three and it kind of seems like I'm on the tall side for this machine. The ride height is pretty low. At times it kind of feels like I'm riding a BMX bike. And the seat comfort, it's just okay. I think I might upgrade that if I own this bike. Keep in mind, there's no rear suspension. So if you're going over bumps, you definitely feel it. But the front suspension is pretty good. It soaks up the rough pavement. If you want full suspension, you'll need to fork over an extra $400 for their R series, which might be worth it if you need to tackle some dirt. It does have some tiny fenders on the front and the rear, but probably not big enough to keep you from getting muddy if you're on a trail. And these super wide tires on this thing give this bike an incredibly stable feel. And the brakes, they're hydraulic and they work really well. They squeak a bit, but they stop the bike really quick, which is necessary because of how fast you can get this thing going. Okay, before we get to the electric motor part of this machine, let's talk about the pedals. In my opinion, the main reason why this machine has pedals is so it can classify as an e-bike. Yeah, you can use the pedals, but most of the time you're not going to. It's not exactly a comfortable pedaling position. And when you're going quickly, only having one gear makes them mostly useless. Instead of pedals, I honestly wish there was just a place to rest my feet that was parallel and not sort of off-centered like this. But then again, I guess if we did that, this would no longer be classified as an e-bike. This bike has a 750 watt hub motor and you can get up to speed pretty quickly on flat ground. But when taking off up a hill, it doesn't have that much juice. And that's where that 84 pound weight of this bike really comes into the equation. So yeah, the pedals really do become a necessity when you're traveling uphill. But once it gets going, this thing hauls some serious ass. Right now I'm going 32 miles an hour throttle only. Yeah, so that's fast enough where you really do have to be cautious. But with these wide tires, it feels secure and stable and I trust the bike. All of the components seem like they're high quality. And this bike has a very super solid, confidence inspiring feel. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features here. The display is super simple and I like it. There's no useless info. It's really easy to get all the info you need at a glance. And the headlight is quite bright, sort of like a motorcycle style light. I feel like all bikes should have decent headlights and most do not. The taillight is really good too. 
I do feel like this S2 should at least have a bell, or better yet, it should have a bell and a horn. If you're pedaling on a bike path like this, a bell is probably the better way to go, so you can alert pedestrians and other cyclists when you're passing. But if you're dicing it up alongside cars, you absolutely need a horn. It also really needs mirrors. This thing is fast enough where you really need to be very aware of your surroundings. And that's one of the first things I would purchase for this bike. The other thing that from the factory, there's really no place to store anything. So I've got my backpack full of all my camera gear, but there are some good accessories and I'd get right on that if I own this bike. But you know, part of the fun of owning a bike like this is customizing it and making it your own. All right, so let's talk range. I weigh about 180 pounds, and if I'm going full throttle all the time, I feel I can get about 30 miles of range. And of course, you can get quite a bit more than that if you're pedaling. And when you inevitably run out of electrons, charging it up takes about six to seven hours, which is decent. We got about 53% charge left. Should have no problem getting home. But as you can tell for most of this video, I've been riding around the LA River bike path. So now we have to dice it up with some traffic to get home to my house. This is where it gets fun and I'm wearing my reflective high visibility yellow vest because Los Angeles drivers don't tend to look out for people on bikes. But the nice thing about this bike is in certain situations, you can keep up with traffic, which is actually, I think a little bit safer. You can take the lane if you need to. And depending on the situation, that can be safer than riding in the gutter. So one nice thing about this bike is that it sort of splits the difference between an e-bike and a moped. So as long as you're using that responsibly, you know, you're not going too fast on bike paths where there's kids riding their little bikes and families and that kind of thing. It is very useful to have that extra speed to be able to dice it up with cars. Now, while there can be some conflicts with pedestrians, the real problem obviously are the conflicts between cars and bikes. And that is kind of the nice thing about this style bike where it sort of splits the difference between an e-bike and a moped is that you really can use it as like a quote, almost motorcycle. I feel pretty comfortable going 30 miles an hour right here. Yeah, but when you're going this fast on roads like this, this is where you really need mirrors. You really need a horn. You really need a turn signal. The speed limit right through here is 25 miles an hour. So I can keep up with that and I don't have to worry about cars behind me, passing me. I mean, they'll still try. This is Los Angeles after all. And kind of the nice thing about being on a bike is that now when I don't feel like waiting in the middle of the road for the light, I'll just wait over here by the crosswalk button. So yeah, it's probably one of my favorite things about this bike is kind of splitting the difference between a bike and a moped. That's where that suspension is really needed. Ooh. Oh God. <laughs> Ow. Oh man. You just gotta like lift your butt off the seat when you see a big bump coming. You can't just ride it expecting it to soak up the bumps. Okay, so there's a lot of videos of this thing riding on dirt. So let's head out of the city and find some trails. So there aren't any trails anywhere near my house or anywhere within the range of this bike. So we have to load it up in a vehicle and drive somewhere where we can ditch the pavement. Let's see if it fits in the back of my Jeep, crossing my fingers. All right, so this is a lot of fun, but I do have to say with no suspension in the rear, my ass is getting killed on this dirt road. And these tires, while they look like they're off-road tires, they are not super grippy. It's a little bit slippery out here. You can have some fun out here, but I would probably opt for the R for a few hundred dollars extra if you really wanted to go off-road frequently. So let's get back to this city where this thing is a little bit more at home. Super 73 was kind enough to let me borrow this for a month. And the first week that I had it, I honestly just couldn't figure out who this bike was for. It's not powerful enough to replace a moped. It's not capable enough off-road to be a dirt bike. It doesn't pedal well enough to replace a bike and it doesn't have space for cargo so it can't easily replace a car. But what I realized is that it's great because it's none of those things. It straddles the line between an electric bike and a moped. It's the best of both worlds and that makes it 
it super useful when getting around a city. You can ride in bike lanes when needed, but you have enough speed that you feel pretty comfortable taking the lane and riding alongside cars when necessary. And you can turn off the electric assist and ride on the sidewalk if your city allows it. It really allows so much flexibility. But of course, you'll need to check your local e-bike laws and you'll absolutely need to ride responsibly. This can easily go over 30 miles an hour and it can easily be problematic on sidewalks or beach paths where there are a lot of people walking. Ultimately, just don't be an a**hole. Don't ruin e-bikes for everyone. The Super 73 S2 retails for around $28.95, which certainly sounds like a lot, but it offers so much flexibility and fun that I think it's totally worth the asking price. What do you think? For me, the S2 is a bike that simply made me want to ride more, and it made me want to discover new places to ride. I ditched my car in favor of the S2 countless times in the last month. It's not perfect, but the S2 is fun, it looks great, and it gave me a new love for two-wheeled transportation. What do you think? Should I do more e-bike reviews on this mainly car channel? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. And if you'd like to help support the channel and allow me to purchase a wardrobe that doesn't burn people's eyeballs, please consider buying a Hellerode t-shirt at hellerode.tv shop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well, and I'll see you soon.